Genesis 9.18 And the sons of Noah that went forth from the ark were Shem and Ham and Jephthah, and Ham was the father of Canaan. You know, to serve God, we don't necessarily go out of his presence. We have to go out of the comfort of his church. To be witness of the world, it revolves us leaving the church. Not leaving fellowship with him, because that's where you fall in error, but leaving the safety of the church. Um... Jose chapter 10, 1 through 3. Okay. Israel is an empty vine. Well, the scripture, Jesus calls himself the vine, the true vine. So it's a, we see a mirror to that here. Israel was the empty vine, but Jesus is the fine thing to grow. This shows that the Old Testament, the law, was just sent to condemn. While Christ was sent to save. The Old Testament was <laughs> Christ was sent to change. He brought forth fruit unto himself, according to the multitude of his fruit. He has increased the altars. Hmm. According to the goodness of his land, they have made godly images, goodly images. Okay, so they're making pagan idols. Um, while they're trying to do all the things supposed to be doing, their heart ain't in it, their heart's in doing things that they ain't supposed to be doing. And this is why they're an empty vine, because their fruit isn't genuine, it isn't a true labor, it isn't heartfelt, they ain't actually serving the Lord, they're just doing rituals. God don't want us to do rituals with our life, He don't want us to have a heart for anything more than him. He's the most important. Verse 2. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. Now there's many people who sit in the church who whose heart's divided. They want to live as the world, but they want to be have that relationship with the Lord. And that just don't work. We die self, but we live for him. Israel was trying to do the pagan things and do things God told them to, and that just don't work. He didn't want half their heart. He wanted all of it. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Now, this altars isn't necessarily a reference to just their pagan altars. Because we see when the captivity came, the temple was destroyed. So it's my, mainly, it's most likely Jose was prophesizing here that this was a breakdown of any altar. Even the four-horned altar inside the temple. Now, of course, there wasn't images. Uh, ungodly images in the temple, but we took, so this is a form of God's judgment, but also mercy, so he's taking away their distractions, sometimes God takes away our distractions as an act of mercy, so we don't have to pour out his wrath on us, verse 3, for now they shall say, we have no king, because we feared not the Lord. What good a king doeth? 
Okay, first off, they're saying we don't have leadership because we rejected the Lord. They're not turning to the Lord's leadership. This is the idea where anarchy is starting. Because they're not being submissive to the Lord and looking to Him. They recognize they don't got a king. So they're going to end up doing what they want to until God lays down His judgment. And oftentimes while we have people who are in charge of us, the world has people in charge of us, of them. That's the way they live. Because there's no fear for the Lord. And we as Christians are to have a fear for the Lord. So it doesn't matter if there's a king. It doesn't matter if there's a leader. We live right, not because of that, but because the Lord leads us. 